Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today I just want to share with you my thoughts on the recent update for this, the Avatar HD system from Walksnail. Now people have been asking where my video is on this update because I have been covering all of the early releases. Now there is a valid reason why I haven't actually put anything out until now and that's because I wanted to do a lot more testing before I shared my thoughts. I actually had early access to that firmware and a couple of betas before it was released and whilst I know that there's been videos for many of the other creators, I wanted to wait until I was fully comfortable with what I was seeing before I shared my thoughts on it. Today is going to be that video. There isn't really going to be a lot of flight footage in this, I'm just going to share with you my thoughts, but I am going to explain what my stance on this system is today compared to in the past where I have felt it is an alpha stroke beta product. Now this new firmware version is version 26.30.6 and that is the latest public version at the point of me making this video. Now there is a lot to discuss here but I'm going to be concentrating on some specific elements, that is the compression behavior and the changes that have been made to the image quality. This new firmware did bring a lot of new improvements. We now have 4x3 mode, they've improved the performance in 50 megabits mode, as well as tweaks in other areas like 1200 milliwatt mode as well, and overall improvements to the system. For me, the real big areas that I've been concentrating on though is the compression behavior, the jitters and the wireless performance of the system. As you've seen on the channel in the past, I have discussed how this performs for me, especially in the kinds of areas I fly, and I was seeing massive compression issues, especially over long grasses. There is no question that in this new firmware, that compression behavior has been largely resolved. Yes, the system does still exhibit issues with compression, but it is not those large areas of blocking out of the blue that we were seeing in the past. Now, you have that more blanket compression approach to the system that has this blanket of noise that appears sort of 40 meters out from the image, but all of that random blockiness that I was showing in my earlier footage largely has been fixed in the system now. For me though, the issue is not that they fixed that, the issue is, is what they've done to actually do it. Because whilst the compression has been fixed, you will now notice that the image has changed quite a lot on the avatar system. It has gone from being a bright, vibrant image to a very dark, warm image. And what it appears to be is that they've removed a lot of the green or the luma from the image, and this has resulted in a much darker image, a much warmer overall tone, but that has resolved the issues with the compression. The problem for me in this is by doing that, they've completely crushed the dynamic range and the overall AGC behavior of the camera in the system now is not working as well as it should be. When you're flying into areas that change from bright to dark, the camera now basically does not adjust. The areas of darkness just like black holes and the reality is there is just not enough dynamic range in the system if you're flying in changing conditions. Also, as I've mentioned, the images moved from a more vibrant to a warmer image, which in my opinion doesn't look as good as it does in the past. And whilst I have openly said I think the Avatar system was one of the best looking digital FPV systems, that is no longer the case as a result of the changes they've made. Now, I have been doing a massive amount of testing around this, especially around its behavior in these conditions, but also around the behavior of the wireless link as well. And while Whilst there has been improvements, the wireless link on Avatar is still very different to what we've seen on the likes of DJI, with the system holding the bitrate up very high and falling off very quickly, with close to no progression in bitrate loss as the signal drops. It is more like a switch in the sense of it is on or off, rather than it being a progressive drop in quality as we see on DJI, and not remotely like what we see on the new DJI Avata drone, which will go all the way down to one megabit and still show some image. Now, overall, the behavior of the system, in my opinion, is still nowhere near where it needs to be. The radio system is not 
progressive it is not manageable in the sense of you can't trust it to a point and then know to go no further it is just unpredictable in the way it behaves there is still jitters in the link and you do get random drops in the wireless link especially at range as well now it's my opinion that what they've done is basically mask the issues they had before rather than fix them and as a result of that masking we've been left with a much more contrasty darker image with very low dynamic range and the wireless link really itself has seen no improvements in the way it transforms from good to poor signal and its overall progression as it moves down the bitrate remains pretty poor overall. Whilst there is no question other areas seem better, the wireless side of it and the camera side of it still need a lot of work and today I still feel this system is very much in a beta status. Further to that, there is still no more information on the situation with regards to the FCC or CE status of this product. We have seen no publicly published documents and we've seen no information to confirm what the legal status is of the radio system on the Avatar system. So for me, my opinion at this moment in time remains that the Avatar HD system is still a beta product. You should be buyer beware and only purchase knowing that the system is still not where it needs to be. I personally want to see this system improve and succeed, but I can't with good conscience tell people that it's ready to be used as a mass product when it simply isn't. I know Walksnail have been massively active on Facebook, on groups, Groups. They're talking to pilots, they're testing new firmware all of the time, but what we now need to see is actual results from the improvement in the firmware, not just masking the issue as my opinion is, but also we need this compliance situation sorted out as well so pilots can know that they are flying legally if they need to. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. If you have found it interesting, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell as well. If you'd like to support us to be able to keep making content like this in the future, please do check out the links to my Patreon in the description. It's only through the support of my Patreons am I able to keep making content like this on the channel. If you've got any comments, questions or thoughts on what I've said, please do put it in the comment section. I try to read every comment and I'll try to reply if there's anything I can help with as well. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.